Good morning. Yes, good morning to you, Sam. How are you doing? You like your... Come on, off. Oh, good job. Hello, good morning. We have a bit of a special occasion coming up in September, October. So I want to make something extra special. Mead. I love mead. It's this really ancient old drink, probably the first alcoholic drink cultivated by the Vikings and the Bolts and the Celts and all these cultures made a wine drink from honey. They found wild beehives and they got the honey out and they had to ferment with rainwater and natural yeast and it became their drink. Long before people started drinking tea and beer or even water, they are drinking mead. So I want to make some mead for this special occasion at the end of the year. They have a drink of legend. Absolutely. Normally, I would use local honey, but on Edie, no one keeps bees, unfortunately. And I haven't been able to find any wild beehives, so I've had to resort to going to the shop and buying some. It's generic runny honey. I'm using about two kilos. You can use more if you want a slightly sweeter mead. Or about one and a half kilos if you like it nice and dry. So I'm going for a mid sweetness for two kilos of honey. First of all, shove it into your pan. Awesome. <laughs> Once your honey's in your pan, you can add your flavourings if you want. I'm going to add some cloves and some cinnamon because I want it to be nicely spiced without being overpowering. So I'm going to pour in a few cloves, a shake, a dollop, uh, 18 in there, some lemon juice. It has a bit of acidity to it and helps. It helps it become proper and tasty. And I'm also going to throw in a cinnamon stick. So that's going in. One of the great things about mead, you don't need to add any additional sugar. The natural sugar in the honey will add enough for it to ferment out, which is awesome. So this natural product from bees turns straight into alcohol. Just add water, like a pot noodle. I love cinnamon. I've just found this packet in the cupboard that Dee's Nan sent her, all the way from Lithuania. It's been there a while, and it's time to use it up. Actually, Birita. So I'm going to add some to the honey as well. Oh, what a very decent shake that is. Next up, you want to add your boiling water to your honey, and your cinnamon, and your cloves. And all the other goodness that's in there. So take it up to your one gallon mark. Like so. And then you want to heat your concoction. There's a great deal of debate out there amongst people who make mead. Do you boil it or just simmer it? Some people say you need to boil it to sterilise the honey and the water. Other people say this makes the honey lose its nutritional value and the flavour. Personally, I turn the oven on and see what happens. If it comes to the boil, I'm not too worried. If it doesn't, I know the water up here is clean and it's not going to kill me. I hope. But then I add yeast to it and it becomes alcoholic. Therefore, the alcohol preserves the water. Fantastic. Win-win. So now that's on the boil, I'm going to leave it on the heat until all the honey diffuses into the liquid. And also give it a stir occasionally to make sure all the cinnamon powder blends in as well. I don't like floaters in my mead. I love the simplicity of mead. You add your honey, you add your water. You then put it into a demijohn and add your yeast. That's the next stage. It's simple if you can find your funnel. 
I've misplaced mine. I have to improvise. I'll work around it. There's always a way. So, once your mead has been a nice gentle heat for a while, and you've stirred out all the lumps of cinnamon, and it's all lovely, thick, smelling delicious, you put it into your demijohn. Tidy. So I've now divided all of my mead into two demijohns. One has the bottom layer with all the cloves in and the cinnamon. The other, the top layer, so it's, it's clearer. I'm going to add the yeast, let it start fermenting. That's where there's the headspace so the yeast can actually work and get the air. Shake every day and after a week combine both demijohns into one. Give me a full gathering. Awesome. So I'm going to be using a dessert high alcohol strength yeast because you want your you, me to have some type of substance to it. Nice bit of cake. So that's what I'm going to do now. Then simply put your airlocks in. Nice and tight seal. Every day I'm going to let new air in, give it a swirl and a stir so that the yeast can have more oxygen to do its aerobic fermentation. That's the plan. Rubber or cork buns? Very good question. I'm a purist. I prefer the cork. I find the rubber in part a bit of a rubbery flavour to the mead. But it's up to you. Let that stand now and be. Ferments. Come on. Bubble, bubble, bubble.